Good morning, my brother. Good morning, my sister. We greet you in the everlasting and adorable name of Jesus, our Christ, and our Lord. And we thank him for this beautiful Saturday morning. It's around 1030 in the morning, and um, uh, we're just getting our day started. And we thought it not robbery to come to you and provide something of life and living to you. Uh, the family is under great pressure during these times we're passing through. And I'm, I'm not sure about your family, my family, immediate we are right in the Lord's hands. Those on the outskirts of it, like all of us, are concerned about all of our family members. But we lift this word in the morning, and we believe that this is a nurturing as well as an encouraging word. It is in the midst of resurrection. And our Lord has a word for families that need resurrections. And that is what we want to talk about for a moment. The resurrection of the family. O oh, blessed Lord, into thy hands we commit the spirit of our families. And we pray that as our Lord's spirit is being highlighted. The highlight of his spirit shall encourage ours that we may come forth from these times before the word looking for the exercise of the word to make us even more dynamic in his sight. In the name of Jesus our Christ and Lord, we pray. Amen and thank God. Let me give you a 15, 20 minute segment, then I'll take a break and you can too. From John chapter 20, verses 15 and 16, here is how it is recorded. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying? Whom seek thou? Jesus is asking her, If you're crying, who are you looking to to dry your tears? She supposing him to be the gardener saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him thence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned to herself and saith unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, Master. I guess in real sense we know that Jesus can master anything for anybody, especially for the families that anybody is a part of. The time associated with the resurrection is early. On the first day of the week marks uh, some very hope-filled factors for the plights, the plagues of our day. The timing of God in raising Jesus from the dead marks a new beginning for those who have come to some 
seeming dead ends and violent confrontations. The woman in our text is an example of so many who did not fully understand the words of Jesus and who now on this morning look for the living among the dead. Mary Magdalene, one out of whom Jesus cast seven demons while in his earthly ministry, is now in earthly sorrow. She comes to the grave of Jesus to perform further burial rites. But she finds something very disturbing. What disturbs her is that the stone which covered the grave was rolled to the side and the body of Jesus is gone. <laughs> she was so disturbed that she runs back into town and reports that someone had taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And no one knows where his body is. Peter and others run to check things out for themselves and they find out the same thing when they arrive. Everyone shakes their head. They come to a dead end of understanding for they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. The disciples returned home, but Mary stayed around, stayed around that tomb, stayed around trying to find some answers. She stays around and looking for answers, she finds some. She looks into the tomb and two angels are sitting in the place where the body of Jesus was lying. One at the head <laughs> and the other where his foot or his feet would be. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? She responds, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had finished speaking and turned, she saw another person, knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus asked her, Why are you crying? And whom do you seek? Not fully comprehensive, she did not recognize his voice nor statue. She did not recognize his voice nor statue. She did not recognize his voice nor his statue and thought that this man was the gardener or grave keeper. She recounts the story of not knowing where the body of Jesus was. I came here Friday. I saw them lay him in here on Friday, but, but he's not here now. But in the midst of this dismay, Jesus calls her name. 
and recognition comes to Mary. I don't know if you've ever heard the Lord call your name before. I don't know if you fully recognize the last time he called your name. Has he ever called your name? <coughs> no coughing was associated with this response of Jesus. But in the midst of this dismay, she hears her name come off his lips one more time. She reaches out and she touched him and seeks to hold on. But Jesus tells her that he must be released to go to his father for the final rite of presentation as the sacrifice for humankind. She was overwhelmed. She was excited and put into the awesome reality that he is not dead, but he is alive. He's alive. Being overwhelmed, she's excitingly rising up from this place where the Lord has said, I got to go this way right now. I'll be back. You, you go your way. He instructs her to go to those of his brethren. Additionally, who had gone home and now in her haste she does as Jesus has instructed and then all of a sudden news of the resurrection began its disposition that he is no longer dead. Key features of the resurrection are relevant for our families today. At this juncture of despair, there is a word for our families. At this place of resurrection, the Lord has risen from seemingly dead circumstances. And there is a voice who's gone to the place and now who's coming from the place where he has risen. She's excited to share this new word. Many wonder today, has the family been crucified, buried, and as some ponder their future, is there any hope? The word of life today is that there is a true identity in the person of Jesus. The family can experience its great resurrection. The features of this early morning event attest to the fact we see in Mary Magdalene one who was at her lowest, but Jesus brought her to her highest. This is a feature of the resurrection. Her visitation to the place where he had been laid says something about her living spirit within her was just had to be where he was even in what she thought he was occupied in, occupied in the hand of death. But a search, a longing 
life beyond mourning turns into momentary suspense as the stone has been rolled away. This suspense, this concern, this wonder, this desire for answers is at the core of many today who wonder, is there hope for us? Is there hope for our families? And in the real sense, I strongly suggest to you that those in our text illustrate the true family of Jesus as we live and minister on earth. Look at Mary. Look at Mary Magdalene, a woman who has considerable property, but had seven demons in her at one time, who became a supporter, a missionary, and an evangelist who was doing the will of his of her father, who now is a member of her family. The brethren were in town but were in his mind, on his heart, as he tells Mary Magdalene to tell them about him rising. And when he visits personally that evening, and eight days later with Thomas, this would be considered his family. And then they would be able to impart the reality of him rising from the dead to their families. Seems like some resurrection is on the Lord's mind. Take advantage my brother, my sister, of the Lord's resurrection because his resurrection could mean resurrection for you and your family. The angels, those who attended him in this transitional period, these heavenly representatives in attendance at the greatest event on the other side of his resurrection and now his new birth, those whom he ministered to, those he ministered with, and those who are the ministers of heaven, the true family of Jesus is also represented. But I also want to drive home this point, Mary Magdalene's despair, the brethren's absence, and the angel's attentive attendance says a whole lot about the resurrection of Jesus, and what it did for their challenged situation. His resurrection turned despair into deliverance. His resurrection turned absence into the presence of his presence, as well as his resurrection would serve as the subsequent joy to the family structure from heaven. The features surrounding the resurrection of Jesus can have the same effect to the despair, the absence, as well as the dismay of heaven in so many families today. Is this despair in our families? But Sonia P. Brooks Amulupu writes in 
Essence magazine two days after my husband left me. I called home from work in the afternoon to talk to my children, but a computerized voice informed me that our phone had been disconnected. Disconnected, it hit me like a splash of ice cold water. She says, how could this be? I asked myself in dismay, I knew I had paid the phone bill. There must be some mistake. I thought, what's going on? I was confused, she said. I was frightened. I called the telephone company to find out what was happening and the person I spoke to patiently informed me that the party in whose name the phone was listed, namely my husband of 15 years, had requested that the phone be disconnected because he was moving out. For a moment, I couldn't believe what she'd said. So, I'm a lupu, dismayingly and tearingly, began to recite how she felt. For a moment, she says, I couldn't believe what she'd said then the reality of what my husband had done hit home. In his desire to fulfill his own selfish needs, he had left our children homeless, helpless. And if there had not been any kind of call by me to get bad news. I was then beset with the news he had imported to the children. If there had been an emergency, I would not have been able to reach them. I was enraged and if it had been another moment, I guess I would have let sorrow take me to some place where I would have committed something I, I would regret the rest of my life. But in the next moment, my rage was tempered by a new reality. I was not truly alone and responsible for the lives of four children. I knew in that instance that I could not dwell in the pain that had been inflicted upon us. So I calmly requested a new number in my name. I calmly requested a new number in my name. I calmly requested a new number in my name. And that was the beginning of my journey as a single parent. So out of dismay and out of despair, this woman had to face reality, and begin a new journey for herself and her four children. My brother, my sister, this is an example of what I'm referring to in this presentation of a resurrection. Responding positive when negative odds are against you. When the death 
of a marriage has occurred. The resurrection of a new beginning must be pursued. It may start with a new phone number and a new listing in a phone book and may also get you a new prayer partner, a new listing in the great phone book of eternity. Whatever the reality, change has produced deliverance and deliverance into a new resurrected person has evolved. I praise God for this initial presentation. We're going to come back um, at our next segment and dig a little deeper into the resurrection of the family. And I trust that reverberation of these times we're in now, we we'll begin to usher in what God would have us to celebrate in this thrust toward the resurrection of our family. Do you have some need to have your family resurrected? Trust if you do, you'll give me a shout. Let me begin to pray with you. Let me begin to walk with you. Let me begin to be a help, a light, some hope. Whatever I can do, I stand ready to channel my impotence, the power of his infinity to beckon life as only he can provide. O oh, life giver, some of the worst conditions we are in right now, touch now, heal now, and deliver now. Resurrection power. Through the power of your resurrection spirit. And if Jesus is up, we can get up to. Hear our prayer. Incline thine ear unto us. And grant thy peace. In the only name that matters, Jesus our Christ. And our Lord, we pray. Our phone number is available. You can call me now, 757-424-5776. We'll leave that number right across the remainder of our screen. Then you can begin to write me. I want to be a writing partner with you, to you. My wife and I married next year, 50 years, November the 1st, 2024, rises to the point of being what God has made us to be, helpers of those who need help. Our journey together started November the 1st, 1974. And since that time, we've had our ups, we've had our downs, but we've also had God on our side. <laughs> and now, we are standers in the gap to aid and assist our brothers and sisters to get where they thought they would throw their hands up in disgust, but now they can throw them up in a praise. Let us hear from you. P.O. Box 1446, Norfolk, Virginia, 23501. 
That address is right at the bottom of the page. We'll leave you with today's presentation, but then we'll come back. We have some more children. We have some more single parents. We have some more solutions from the Redeemer, from the resurrected one that we want to pass on to you. So stay tuned. We'll look forward to our next presentation of the resurrection of the family. Until then, may the love of God be yours. God bless.